Welcome to lecture number 39 for ECE 461 Control Systems, Leading Design Specs in the Frequency Domain. Now, when designing compensators in the frequency domain, the specs typically are the steady state air for step input, the phase margin, and the 0 dB gain frequency. The procedure using body plots and frequency domain techniques is almost the same as what it was for root locus plots. If you need no air for step input, add a pull at s equals zero if needed, making the system type one. If it's already type one, you typically don't want to add a second pull because that's going to make life really hard. Second, start canceling zeros until the system's too fast. You still have the same stipulation that you had in the time domain. You can't cancel unstable zero or unstable pulls. Uh, but you start adding zeros to cancel pulls until you get a system, system that's faster than you need meaning the bandwidth is wider than you need. For every zero that you add, add a pull. If you add three zeros, you need to add three pulls to make sure you're not differentiating. Place those pulls so that you get the right phase at the frequency you care about. And this is probably easiest to go through an example. It's similar to what we did in the root locus plots. In root locus, what you do is you search along a damping line until the angles add up to 180 degrees. Once I find that spot at any point on the root locus, g times k is minus 1. For meeting specifications, if I want a very specific response, like when I place the closed loop poles here, I slide one of the poles around, basically cancel with a 0, and then slide it until the phase adds up at this point. By adding up, that just means that the angle is 180 degrees. That's root locus. That's what we did before. Now, in the frequency domain, what we're doing is we're searching along the j-mega axis, meaning s equals j-mega frequency domain. Uh, in this case, I search until the angles add up to something like minus 151 degrees for resonance of 2 dB. Once the angles add up, make the gain 1 at that frequency. That's gain compensation. For design, if I want a very specific 0 dB gain frequency, uh, then what I do is I slide a pole around, put a 0 on top of a pole, and slide it around back and forth until the phase adds up at my desired frequency. Then I force the gain to be 1 there. Hence, I've got the correct 0 dB gain frequency and the correct phase margin. So they're very similar, root locus and frequency domain techniques, except that one is searched along the damping line, the other one is searched along the j-mega axis. As an example, uh, suppose I had this system, and I want to design a compensator to meet the following requirements. I want no error for step input, I want 20% of overshoot for the, in the step response, and a settling time of 4 seconds. Now the first thing you need to do is convert that to the Bode plot terminology. No error for step input means type 1 system. 20% overshoot for step response means zeta is 0.4559, means the resonance is 1.22, means that the uh, Phase is minus 132 degrees when the gain is 1, means the phase margin is 47 degrees. So uh, what I want is the phase to add up to minus 132 degrees. That gives me 20% overshoot. A suddenly time in 4 seconds means the real part of the pole is at minus 1 because of the angle, complex part's at 2. The complex part is my 0 dB gain frequency. I want the 0 dB gain frequency to be 2 ratings per second and to have a 47 degree phase margin, and a type 1 system. So that now I've got the requirements and terminology useful for frequency domain analysis, I start designing the compensator. Uh, first, I need to know need to know the form of the compensator. Uh, the requirement says at 2 ratings per second, the gain is 1 and minus 132 degrees. That's my 0 dB gain frequency is 2, and I have a 47 degree phase margin. Let's start with the compensator S plus 1 over S. The 1 over S I know because I want it to be type 1. If I had a pole, I can add a 0. And let's cancel the slowest stable pole. Move that to the origin. That's my first step. If I then try this, then at 2 radians per second, g times k has the phase shift to minus 153 degrees. I want it to be minus 132, so I'm too close to minus 1. I need to add phase. 
and the way you add phase is you add a zero. Let's cancel the next lowest pole, pole at minus three. Now analyze g times k at two radians per second. I'm at minus 119 degrees. I've got too much phase margin. Too much phase margin is good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then add a, another pole to eat away at the phase margin to push the phase back to minus 132 degrees. So at that point, I'm done. I've added enough zeros. If I add two zeros, I need to add two poles. So one pole goes to the origin. The other one, I don't know where it goes. It's where, wherever it takes to make the phase add up. And by add up, it means at two ratings per second, the phase should be minus 132 degrees. So you take the phase of everything that you know, and I'm off by 12 degrees. So that means the phase shift of 1 over s plus a must be minus 12 degrees. So a then, using some trigonometry, is 2 over the tangent of 12 degrees. Gives you 9.11. What that means is now k of s is in this form. I've got two zeros, two poles. Put one pole at the origin, the other one at 9.11. And if I do that at my design point, at 2 radians per second, the phase is minus 132 degrees, just what I want. Gain's wrong. I want that to be my 0 dB gain frequency. So make the gain 1. That gives you k is 1.2. So here's my compensator. In this sim, I can check the response. And notice, here's my compensator. There's my plant. I've got 20% overshoot. That worked. Uh, nowhere, all that. It's actually a little bit more than 20%. The reason being is I'm designing for a phase margin. When you design for a phase margin, I intersect the M circle at 0 dB, meaning I actually pass slightly inside the M circle. So the resonance is slightly too high. The gain is slightly too high. The overshoot is slightly too high. But that's typical when you're designing the frequency domain. Um, if I were to design using Nichols charts, it'd be much harder, but it'd be more accurate. The other option is design using phase margin. I'll be really close. Just back off in the gain slightly to get it down to 20% then. Um, example, the second example. Delays were a problem with root locus. If I had a delay, I needed to use a potty approximation to figure out where the zeros and poles are. In the frequency domain, I don't really care. As long as I can find g of j omega, that's all I need. Well, when you have a delay, that's actually really easy. The phasor representation of that is 1 at an angle phi, where phi is just e to the minus 0.2 times j omega. So since I can analyze this, I can handle that in the frequency domain just as well. Suppose I repeated that last design. I take the previous design, add a 200 millisecond delay, now design a compensator. In that case, what I would do is, again, my requirement say I want to have my 0 dB gain frequency being 2 radians per second, and I want to have a phase margin of uh, 47 degrees, 47.88 degrees. So what I'll do is similar to what we did before. I'll start with a compensator. Add a pull at s equals 0. That makes it type 1. And my phase is too, too negative at 2 radians per second. Cancel the first pole. And the phase is still too negative. Cancel the second pole. And the phase is still too negative. Cancel the third pole. Now my phase shift is minus 124 degrees. I want it to be minus 132. I have too much phase margin. Too much is good. I added three zeros. I need to add three poles. The extra two poles need to eat up the difference. So add two poles. Those two poles have to add 7.89 degrees phase shift. So each pole adds 3.94 degrees phase shift. So I put the pole right here. Opposite of adjacent is tangent. The real part needs to be at 28.995. So here's k of s. To find the gain k, I analyze that s equals j2, and I get the correct phase margin. Gain's wrong, though. To fix the gain, uh, add gate k to make the gain 1 at 2 radians per second. So k is 17.22. And there's my compensator. And the acid test, if I have my plant compensator, 
200 millisecond delay, close the feedback loop, I get 20% of her shoot, just like I expected. Again, it's a little bit off because I intersected the M circle rather than a tangent to it. If I back off in the gain slightly, I can get down to 20% of her shoot. Or if I analyzed in the, with a Nichols chart, I'd be much closer. But frequency domain techniques tend to be a little bit aggressive when I design for phase margin. I'm going to have a little bit too much gain, a little bit too much overshoot. That's typical, though. So with that, I can now design compensators to meet design specs in the frequency domain. What I wind up with is um, a yeah, fairly complicated system. To implement it, I would just split this up and call it a PI compensator, a lead compensator, and a second lead compensator. With that, I can implement that with an op-amp circuit. That's lecture number 39, meeting design specs in the frequency domain.